What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with more T-Mobile Bianchi here on PCM 2020 and we got our season off to a pretty nice start I would suggest because Matteo Fabro, if you haven't gone and watched it, go back now. He won the Santos Tour Town Under after winning on Wollonga Hill as well. A brilliant start to our season and our now 26 year old climber is developing into a really nice rider in the World Tour. We have had a few races in between. We have had the Tour of Colombia, where we were nowhere in the GC. Teo Gegenhardt won the race, but if we take a look, for example, did win three stages in a row, so it was a pretty nice race. Further to that, we did come second in the Clasca de Almera to Olav Coy riding for Alps in Phoenix, and it was Stefan Biska runner up there. Coy, a very, very talented rider. This man, I am certain, uh, in real life as well, guys. He's going to be one of the best sprinters in the world saw pretty shortly, in my opinion. But anyhow, looking at today's stages, we will be riding the UAE Tour, followed by Omloop Pet Newsblad. We then have Colonel Brussel Kerner and the Saman, which I may throw in, depending if they're exciting at all. But the UAE Tour, it's the fairly standard route. We have Yebel Hafit, Hassadam is in there, also Yebel Yez. So it's the routes we're all familiar with. And it's our first time riding the race, so hopefully we're going to enjoy it. Let's take a look at our squads. So joining us over in the UAE, we are led by the likes of Antonio Saburi making his season debut. But we also have Vadim Pronsky and Giovanni Aliotti. In the sprints, we have Stefan Bissega. We also have Kevin Vermarker, Giga Horvat and Patrick Gamper. So pretty well-rounded squads, I feel, heading into the race. We get underway then here for the team time trial and I did bring this team with the team time trial in mind. We have Taburi, also Bissiga, as well as Gamper who can all time trial pretty well, especially Bissiga and Taburi. Let's see where we are at the first split. But I would quite like to take a look at the start list here. So we have Ala Philippe, Evenepoel, Ghana for quick step. We have Matthew Vanderpool, Roglic and Grunewagen, Carapaz is here alongside Chris Froome, Pagaccia here for the home team. Very strong start list, as you would imagine. Mark Hershey here for Facebook Trek, and he is actually leaving uh, Team DSM today on the day of recording this as we come across that first split. Not too bad, actually. Five seconds down, but if we take a look, Caleb Ewan, Shackman, Vlasov, Nairo Mann, Emrik Mass, just a seriously strong start list. So we now have Bissiga trying to take us to the line. He's going to collapse though, so Vermarka can take over. Here we go, across the finish. We're 19 seconds down. To be honest, it's not really too bad. So only a few gaps today here in the UAE, and Walter Vargas wears the leader's jersey for Tukoinink Quick Step. He did win the time trial. We were 10th place, but only 20 seconds down. We can definitely make that up, I think, later in the race, at least. I hope so. And poor Vini Zabu losing 1 minute and 36 compared to everyone else. Stage 2 gets underway then, and we have a decent day with Stefan Bissega on a plus one day, and he is going to be leading us today in the sprint. 75 sprint on the day, and we knew when we came to World Tour we didn't have the deepest squad. Rick Zabel really is our only World Tour level sprinter. Bissega still developing. It would be great if he can gain a few extra attributes in that sprinting department though. Um, and hopefully today he can prove he can compete against these World Tour guys. So we are coming towards the finish and our lead out is just non-existent here because Gamper is on a pretty poor day. So I may try and follow someone like David Decker, Gerben Tyson with, uh, of course, Stefan Bissega a little earlier. Even Olav Koy, who beats him at the Classic Almeria um, off screen. So let's try and follow Olaf Koy today and see how this plays out. So I very rarely sprint like this. I usually have a full lead out, but you can see we have the Jumbo Visma train ahead, David Decker here. And this is why, because we have moments of slowing down like this, where you really lose your momentum into the final 6K. I've tried to put Gamper on Bisker's wheel just so he can try and protect him from uh, getting followed. But Gerben Tyson trying to push us off Olaf Koy's wheel. Bissiger fighting back here. Not quite sure what I'm doing, but we're going to see if this works at all. Still on Koy's wheel. Uh, we're by far an outsider for this sprint today, as we have a few guys coming up on the right-hand side as well. We're getting blocked in as well with 2.5k to go. I have no idea how this is going to play out. 
Uh, we've gone to Tyson's wheel, have we? Let's go back to Koi with Bissiger. And we're nowhere near the front. But now into that final kilometre. We're absolutely nowhere. Oh, boy. Absolutely nowhere. Horrible first stage. And Dylan Grunewagen is going to not win because Caleb Ewan takes the second stage of the UAE Tour. And where were we so far back with Stefan Bissiger? So let's forget about that atrocity of a stage two as quickly as possible. We have Yebel Hafit today, unless I'm mistaken. Yes, we do. Uh, where our climbers are going to take to the four. Aliossi is on the best form. Into the final 12k then. We're keeping our guys in a very good position, to be fair. Uh, but really, I think Aliossi is our clear leader. Maybe Pronsky, but Tiberi on his season debut race is struggling, it would seem. Uh, today on a minus three. So I think he'll be a domestique at least for today. Yebel Hafit is starting right now. It's very, very steep. Let's tempo at 80 and just try and stay to the front if we're able to do that with uh, De Koinink and Facebook to the front. And here we go, an early move. It's Mark Hershey and Dan Martin attacking off the front. Philippe does try to follow. And for now, I will let them go, I think. I don't think we have really the ability to follow them straight away. Uh, we still have Bisker, Gamper, Giga is trying to hold on. Um, he is going to be done right now though, so Kevin Vermarka can move to protect Aliossi as other teams are going to try and come to the front to catch that very, very dangerous front trio. And AG2R are going to be the team to do it, not with their horrible jersey that they have in real life apparently. But anyhow, uh, Taburi is trying to get to the front and those guys have now been caught. But they go again. This time we have Kosnafar trying to join those guys. They kick again with 5k to go. And this time, that is a very dangerous move. Stefan Biska has done a brilliant job today. I think Pronsky is going to try and come to the front with Taburi as well. We're just trying to set a rhythm here. Let's Senko trying to bridge to those guys as Hershey and Martin struggling to stay away. Kosnafar and Alaphilippe are caught and here goes Primoz Roglic right now. Aliotti is trying to stay in a good position. We have quite a lot of energy left with Aliotti in fairness and even Antonio Taburi. So Pronsky is going to try and come um, to the front and Aliotti can grab his wheel. Taburi can try and stay there if he can. I doubt it though as Roglic has joined those guys at the front. 2k to go. It's all happening very quickly here in the UAE today. Venepool trying to catch them. Oh, that went down to... Uh, a number I didn't like at all. But now, 1k to go. Pronsky trying to tempo a little bit. Trying to sprint for the line. So can Aliotti. But Primoz Roglic going for the stage win. Molema coming. Aliotti is going to finish pretty well today. But Primoz Roglic takes the win on top of Yebel Hafid. Dan Martin, who was strong throughout, finishes in seconds. Balka Molema and Cantana with good finishes. And Aliotti right there. With Pronsky, to be fair, right at the front of the race. And there will be some small time gaps, it would seem here. Roglic taking some time on everyone else. And with that team time trial, he overcomes that deficit and now goes into the lead of the race. And scrolling down a little bit, we do have some pretty big gaps further down as well. To my surprise, which really is great to see. So Pronsky and Aliotti shoot up the leaderboard. Underway we go then for stage four and Hatta Dam today. We know how steep that finish is and we've struggled so far at this race. Let's be real. Hopefully we can really try and push on here and assert some kind of presence here because we really haven't done anything so far. So Giga Horvat is piling the pressure on early here today. We're trying to make this a difficult stage early on. And our guys are struggling a little bit, so hopefully a few other teams are struggling as well. Okay, we have just had a big moment. George Bennett has fallen as well as Simone Consini, and we have a big gap on the front. 85 riders are here with 6k to go suddenly in this race. I didn't realise we had such little time remaining, but Stefan Bisca is going to try and push the tempo. We have the likes of Tim Wellens behind as we approach Hatta Dam. We have Kevin Vermarker here with Pronsky as well. I think those guys are our leaders. Probably Vermarker over Pronsky, we'll see. But Biska is going to try and lead us into that final section in the lead of the race. It's very, very difficult finish, as we know, 2K to go. Here we go, Biska is now going to have to go 95 as we approach the final climb to Hatta Dam. Right now, 1.2 K to go, we're trying to hold on, we're trying to hold on. Here we go, here goes the marker. We're in a good position. Here comes Pronsky as well. We're not going to take it. Kun Bauman is going to win on Hatta Dam ahead of Hershey. And I think the marker 
may get a top three ahead of Mollema. Can he? Can we get a top three? A top three for Kevin Vermarker. A great result. Oh, but I felt we could have won that. Kern Bauman wins stage four of the UAE Tour. If one of you guys can help me with this, that would be greatly appreciated because Kuhn Bauman has just won on Hatazam. Look at these attributes. And look at these attributes. How has that happened? Kuhn Bauman, what a win. We had a great effort with Kevin Vermarker, and that would have been a lovely maiden World Tour victory for the American not to be, but our best result of the race by far. So we do have a tiny breakaway of just two riders up the road today, but we have a good set of race days for today's sprint stage and I can assure you we are not doing what we did last time. Gamper is going to lead out Stefan Bisker today. Okay we enter the final 9k of the stage. We are approaching this little incline. I think we can try and take advantage here with Kevin Vermarker. Let's go up to 95 to start. Try and make sure we're right at the front which we're doing a great job of. 99 right now with Vermarker into this little descent and hopefully we're just going to open up the field a little bit. I know we spent some red on our leaders but that shouldn't be uh, an issue at all. Let's just take position right now and Vermarker pretty much done but 5k to go. We have Pronsky in the sprint train today who is on fantastic form. A plus four then Gamper then Bissiga. This is a much more familiar tactic for me. I'm sure you guys feel the same but 3k to go Pronsky doing a great great job potentially gone a little early here but here we go Gamper is trying to hold out Caleb Ewan has surely gone too early talking of going early here goes Gamper and Bisga into the final kilometer can we try and challenge for this one we're closer than last time but I think it will be Arnold Zamar very strange kind of laggy glitch across the line but Bisga in the top 10 not a bad result it's much better again here with Bissiger in the top 10. We're improving slowly, it seems, as the race goes on. Hopefully that continues into the next one. So I did decide to throw Bissiger up the roads in today's break where you can see the current group. So Mittier, Tratnik and Denz, a fairly strong group in fairness. Just to see what happens more than anything, I think we'll probably be caught at the foot of the climb. And as I predicted, entering the foot of Yebel Yes, we are seeing now attacks in the breakaway group. Bissiger is struggling to stay with the guys at the very front. Probably best if he just tempos at 80 by himself. He is going to be caught there only about a minute up the roads from the main group. And so Stefan Bissiger will actually be the strongest man left from that early breakaway, but the tempo is rapid right now. He is about to be caught with 16 K still to go. He may as well drop back and try to help out if he can. Here we go then. 12k to go. We have the first big attacks. Pagacha, Quintana try to attack away. Surely Chad Hager cannot follow and he cannot. Quintana and Pagacha do go away right now. And I think we're going to settle for Pronsky as our leader. He's our best placed man in the GC and probably feeling the best of our climbers right now. So Tabury is going to try and support him, but still. 10k to go and look at our energy. We have pretty much nothing left. Let's try and rest up. But Pagacha goes again. Carapaz, a Venerpool, and Emric Mass try to follow this time. Oh boy, but Primoz Roglic, the race leader, is in trouble. Roglic is in trouble with 8k still to go. My oh my, Tiberi is done. Aliotti is going to try and come and protect Pronsky for a little while as a Venerpool and Emric Mass have gone clear by themselves, dropping Pagacha and Richard Carapaz. And suddenly, Pronsky is looking okay with 6k to go. We still have quite a few riders here, but seeing Roglic crack like that really was a massive surprise to me. Lander is struggling, and these guys are all really struggling now in this group, including Tade Pagacha. So right now we have dropped Roglic, the likes of Lechnerson, Dan Martin, Vlasov as well. Pronsky is trying to stay to the front as Remco has gone and tried to drop Emmerich Mass. Those guys are neck and neck at the front right now. I think Venepool is the best placed man in the GC from that group. We're seeing Molima, Alaphilippe start to struggle as well. And Pronsky is still looking just about okay with 3k to go in this group. Following the front two, if we can just stay here a little longer, that would be excellent. We have Dunbar, Molima getting dropped as well. 
Uh, let's try and sit on Katana's wheel if we can, but we are now starting to really struggle and it looks like we could get dropped alongside Richard Carapaz. So Emric Mass has now attacked Remco Evenepoel to try and win the UAE Tour. I think it's between these two guys. Pronsky has just been dropped. Let's try and follow Richard Carapaz into the finish. Mass versus Evenepoel for the stage win on Yebel Yasis is so close. But uh, Evenepoel is beaten by Emric Mass today. We then have Pogaccia in third place only. Soler for Kofidis, Letsenko, Quintana, Lanza and Pronsky will be a little further back. But I think we may have gained ourselves a place in the top 10 in the GC. Finishing uh, the second best Kazakh on the day. But a really respectable performance in my opinion. And what on earth happened to this man today? So Emric Mass takes stage honours here but Remco Evenepoel will go into the lead and most likely win the UAE Tour this year. Um, but Mass and Evenepoel were different class to everyone else today. Pronsky though, a minute and 21 down in the ends. But looking at the riders we finished ahead of, I think we can only be very, very happy with that performance today. Primoz Roglic exploding as well. That is a massive surprise. But Pronsky does indeed cement himself in the top 10. We also go into the top three behind Pogacar and Venepool in the Young Riders jersey. I mean, Pronsky is in some pretty decent competition right here. Um, and also ahead of our ex-rider Gino Marder. So you join us with 15k to go into Dubai today. The final stage of what has been, let's be honest, a pretty miserable race by a few small highlights. Let's hope we can do something better today in the sprints. But Bisga, a minus one day, is going to be very difficult. So we now enter the final 6k. We can use our final gels right about now. And we have a few little lead up men next to us to Bury is in the lead out today trying to add an extra man to make the difference let's put him to 99 we're just going to turn right into the finish here in Dubai today 3k to go and Vermarka can now go to 99 and we're looking pretty good until that moment right there where Gampa gets completely blocked oh my words terribly blocked right there for Patrick Gampa can we find any way through here today seemingly not Gampa could well be our best chance in the finish in the end but Grunewagen destroys everyone or does he Demar comes through in the end and Gamper will get third place without those blocks I think we could well have done something because Bissiger was right there what a shame so let's be real again here this was not our best race I hope that's not going to be our best race of the season that's for sure looking back on it no real highlights I think Hatterdam we had a great opportunity to win the stage. Kuhn Bauman somehow taking it. I went a little late there with Kevin Vermarka. Um, and a real highlight for me was probably Jabal Yace with Pronsky in the top 10 there. When you look at the opposition, he finished the head of and around. Really great performance by our young Kazakh climber. And then we really could have done better with a decent performance on the final stage. But those blocks really put pay to Bissiger's chances with Gamper. In the top three, a great result for the young Austrian. But a top 10 overall, to be fair, not too bad with Pronsky. With Remco Evenepoel, 22 years old now, he looks very, very, very tasty now. So I have been advised by my staff to book a training camp for the Giro. So as that is really our home grand tour, I think we're definitely going to go ahead and do that right here. We'll go to Pinarolo in Italy for the final mountain stages of this year's race. So I've selected our riders based on our current kind of pre-selection of the Giro. So we have these riders going. I would send Bisga, but he's going to Paris-Roubaix, but we can slot this in ahead of the Ardennes Classics. So the Cobble Classics are underway as you see, and Gianni Moscon does look set to be our leader in this one on a plus one day, whereas Jonas Fritsch and Jakobs not on the best days. However, Kovi is on a pretty good day as well. So maybe he can play a role. I've chosen to avoid going in the breakaway. We have 10 riders currently up the road. And by the way, I did notice that some of the jerseys weren't working properly. I have Europe car in. I have the new AG2R jersey in as well, which I said we would change. So there you are. We have a few jerseys fixed. And what timing is that? Because Kofi falls as I start talking about the jerseys. I said he was going to try and help us today on a good day, but maybe not after that fall. Okay, we have 67k to go. Kovi did make it back in, but as you see, he's pretty much done 
already. We have just 66k to go and this race really is yet to get going so far with the same 10 man breakaway up the roads from earlier in the day. And we have 46k to go now, 83 riders at the front. We still have our entire team here, although quite a few are now starting to struggle quite a lot over the next climbs, I think gonna have to shake this race up so 30k to go and still not too much going on we have 60 riders in the main group the first breakaway are still holding on and i think we may as well sit up and wait for those final two major climbs we have the capital moor of course followed by the bosberg which is where we're going to try and make the difference today now we are finally seeing the first big moves by the big favorites ollie narson is trying something as he enters or is about to enter the capital moor Jakobs can try and pace for Gianni Moscon. Ruch is trying to get there. He is struggling for now, though. Uh, but here we go. Narsen has been caught. Let's try and set a really hard rhythm coming into this climb with Jakobs. Ruch on his wheel. And these guys are just failing to follow what on earth is going on. We're going to have to try right now a move with Gianni Moscon on the Capel Moor. We have Narsen following. And really, that acceleration into this climb has paid off because... Gianni Moscon and Narsen have a small gap on some of the favourites, but here come the best cobblers, Lampert, Gilbert as well. Moscon will be right here at the front of the race over the top of the climb. Can we try and push it with Gianni as Lampert is trying a move? Let's try and follow Narsen or even Phil Gilbert with Moscon as those four guys are now at the front of this race. Moscon, Gilbert, Narsen and Lampert look the big favourites to challenge for this one right now with Van Aert using his teammates. But we've got to be careful now coming into the Bosberg. Gilbert does seem to be struggling, so I'm going to try a little move here with Moscon and suddenly Gilbert uh, uh, reacts to that very, very easily, it seems, after seemingly really struggling. Sagan and Van Aert are, be uh, are behind right now. We can't afford for them to get back on as Phil Gilbert is starting to weave and he is gone for the day. Moscon trying to hold Lampet's wheel, but Oli Narsen is so, so strong today. And Moscon cannot hold the wheel of the Belgian. He has 81 flats and Moscon is just clinging on to Yves Lampert. I mean, are we in the same group? It says we are right now and we're just trying to get back on. We need to work with him. 10k to go, right. Let's try and work with Yves Lampert with Gianni Moscon. Behind we have Pedersen, Sagan, Van Aert, Gilbert and GVA. And it's Oli Narsen looking set to win Omloop Pet Newsblad at this rate. 8k to go. Can we work with Lampert to bring him in? Although, looking at this, Lampert is now really, really struggling. I'm going to try and use him if we can, but like I say, he is really struggling. I'm going to try and move with Gianni Moscon out of this corner to try and drop him. And there you go. Gianni Moscon is now in second place behind Oli Narsen. 5k to go, and we are looking absolutely brilliant. Sagan is leading the chase behind. Can we get to Oli Narsen? He's a better sprinter than us but this could be an exciting moment for the team trying to challenge for Omloop Pet Newsblad it's Moscon versus Oli Narsen trying to go for it Lampert cannot catch them right now and I think we're going to get there with 2k to go we're completely done but here we are we've just got to the wheel of Oli Narsen with Gianni Moscon the guys are coming behind Narsen opens it up here comes Moscon we just don't have it oh it's it's heartbreak for Gianni Oli Narsen holds on for a deserved win. It's Van Aert in seconds. And we're going to drop to about 6th place or 5th place on the day. It's heartbreak for Moscon. I thought we had a chance for a moment. Oli Narsen definitely deserved that victory today. He was the strongest, the most aggressive coming into the Kapil Moor as well. And he held off Van Aert and Stuyven and the rest in that sprint. We were the best of the non-Belgians. And I think that is the best we're going to take from Omloop this year. I thought... We could have maybe taken it looking at Narsen uh, towards the end of that race. But really, I think we have to be pretty happy with that result today. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Timo Barbianchi. Not the best in terms of performance again, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. And we're really building into the season proper now. We have Strada Bianca, Paris-Nice and Torreno up next, which I think was split over two episodes. That should be a really enjoyable section and then we're heading into Catalonia. And really, after a few classics, we of course have some monuments to conquer the Ardennes. And we're not even too far away from the Giro right now. But getting a little far ahead of us, I think, Strada, Paris-Nice and Torreno should be a very, very enjoyable one. And hopefully, we will have the news 
at the beginning of next episodes that Lena Kemner is fit and able to start Paranese because that is where we should see Lena Kemner's season debut. If you enjoyed today, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button as well if you're new and let me know what you thought in the comments below. I will see you in the next one.